Hey guys, and welcome back to LPJ Models. In this video, I'm going to be trying out a 3D printer. So guys, I recently got sent the Elego Mars 2 Pro, which is a 2K 3D printer. They reached out via email and asked if it would be useful for the channel. And to be honest, I jumped at the chance. I've seen other prolific modelers and YouTubers use these to great effect, so I'd love to see what I'll be able to do. So as a disclaimer, even though this has been given to me free of charge, all of my opinions and thoughts on it are my own. I've not been paid or told to say anything about this product. So in the intro montage, you saw me set the 3D printer up. This was pretty simple. All you had to do was screw the build plate on, peel off the film and away you go. But the printer does come with a few accessories and I'll go through these now. We've got some Allen keys for adjusting the parts and also some backup screws for the resin tank. A two gigabyte USB drive. This is to store your files in. And when the files are printing, it's plugged into the USB port on the front of the printer. The power lead and adapter, of course you won't get very far without this. This comes in two parts, the part that attaches to the printer and the transform box and the kettle lead comes separately. Now my kettle lead was DOA so I had to replace it from an old guitar amp but that wasn't too big a deal. A bit annoying if you don't have a spare kettle lead though. One nice addition is that you get a pair of side cutters to help deal with any 3D printed supports that you might have on your prints. These are quite a reasonable quality and they do do a good job of cleaning up the parts. And of course, if you want your 3D printed surfaces to be perfect, you're going to have to do a bit of extra cleanup. But these do a good job of getting you down to a workable level. You get a yellow spatula and that's for cleaning up excess resin. You also get a DIY style paint scraper. This is for the rather brutal task of removing your prints from the build plate. You do get some rudimentary PPE because resin is nasty stuff and you don't want to get it on your skin or breathe it in. Starting with something we've come to be very familiar with over the last few years are some paper masks. There are some gloves come in, this is just the order I pulled it out of the box. Next up we've got some filters. Now these are for straining your resin back into the bottle after you've used it. The last thing you want is any cured or semi-cured resin to be poured back into the bottle. That would be a good way of messing up your prints later. This is an adapter for angling the build plate. Basically you put this on and let the resin drip off back into the resin tank. You saw me put this on earlier, it's a rubber seal and it helps to keep the resin fumes inside the box. And last of all, we've got some gloves. Like I said before, it's not something you want to get on your skin, but if you do, just wash it off immediately with warm soapy water. Let's get printing. The resin Elego sent me is a water washable one. Usually, resin is cleaned with isopropyl alcohol, so having a water washable option is a great idea. From the reviews I've seen, the alcohol-based resin is much better, but I haven't had any problems so far with the water washable version. So to get going, I poured the resin into my resin tank. As a quick note, I didn't show this step, but it's very important to calibrate your build plate before printing. This is covered in the instruction book. So the first things I'm going to print are the two test rook pieces that are already included on the USB stick. Once you hit the print button, you're greeted with several folders that are on the USB stick. 
and all you need to do is select your file, press play and away you go. The screen handily tells you how long you have left on your print. So all that was left for me to do was to watch the build plate plunge satisfyingly into the resin for the very first time. Nice, let's put the lid on and go and do something else for a few hours whilst these pieces print. And they're done. With these default settings, the print took about four hours. The build plate was tilted and the resin was left to drip back into the vat. Any excess resin on the build plate was scraped away with my nice yellow spatula. Off camera, the parts in the build plate were rinsed thoroughly in a tub of water. Then it was time to get the rooks off of the build plate. Always follow the correct procedures for rinsing off your parts because the resin can be very harmful for aquatic life. Don't just pour it down the drain. Well, that went flying. The prints aren't yet ready once they've been removed from the build plate. They still need to be cured. The resin is cured by UV light, so you can put them outside but this takes a long time. It would be worth either making your own or buying a curing booth. So with the whole printing and curing process complete, let's take a look at the final results and how applicable this will be to my modeling. So let's start with the rook pieces. These were done without adjusting any settings. And I gotta say, I'm really impressed. One of the biggest worries for me were layer lines. And these are gonna be much more noticeable on curved surfaces. But the layer lines here are so fine, a coat of paint would probably cover them. The details are also really crisp. I've just tweaked the footage here so you might be able to see it a bit better. So these test prints are pretty impressive, but I've also downloaded some files to test. There's one downside with this setup, and that's that white resin is really hard to film. So I printed an EV for Sophie from Pokemon. I printed this small scale stalker figure, which shows you that this printer will be more than capable of printing small scales. But so far I've showed you the prints with the support structures removed. This second stalker figure, I left the support structure on to show you what you'll need to clean up. And while this may seem wasteful, if this support structure wasn't there, your miniatures wouldn't print properly. And I couldn't not show you this because I thought it was hilarious. I also printed off this Captain Picard headed Buddha statue for my friend Doug. He found it funny and it was well received. And my friend Matt over at Model Minutes also designed this plaque to congratulate me on getting 30,000 subscribers. Thanks mate. Okay so so far we've only seen these prints in bare resin and the details have been hard to see. So I decided to prime up one of the stalker figures with Mr. Surfacer 1000 Mahogany. I've got to say the first time I put paint on one of these prints, I was really nicely surprised. Of course, the detail depends on what settings you're using and how detailed the base file is. But for a free file off the internet, I was pretty amazed. Okay, so these have all been very nice, but let's try and print something a bit more appropriate. I'm always looking for jerry cans for my vehicles. And I found this set of 135th scale jerry cans on Colts 3D for £1.26. They're really nicely modelled, so let's see how they print up. I laid out several of the jerry cans in my splicing software, Tutorbox. For the bases, I generated auto supports, but for the handles, I placed some manually. These were sliced and then printed with 0.02 layer lines. That's really fine. 
Once again, the white resin is causing problems when showing you the details, but let's get some paint on these. Okay, so the camera is zoomed into the max, so we're going to pick up every last detail. Surprisingly, the lettering came out and it's legible. That's pretty cool. There are, at this size, some obvious layer lines, but they'll just need to be sanded off. And I also found out layer lines are very dependent on how you orientate the pieces on the bed. But look how fine that bracket is on the fuel nozzle. It's not even half a millimetre. That's pretty impressive. Anyway, I've already got several ideas of how I can use my 3D printer in future projects. And don't worry, the channel isn't going to turn into a 3D printing channel but I can really see myself integrating this technology into my model building. I don't think I've got the skill to make entire kits or anything, but I can start with supplementing my builds with small details and accessories. I've already designed a model base and some paint masks for some upcoming projects, but who knows what the future will bring. And as ever, I'd like to give a huge thanks to my patrons for supporting my work. I really appreciate it guys, your support goes a long way. If you'd like to become a patron, just head to www.patreon.com forward slash LPJ models. Anyway guys, thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.